AMD just announced the RX 6500 XT. Many in the tech community have labeled this as one of the worst GPUs ever. Just how did AMD mess this one up and what could they have done better? Let's get into it. The tech reviewers have weighed in and it seems the reviews have taken a bit of a negative tone. After seeing some of the reviews, it seems that in general this card is no better than the card it replaced in the RX 5500 XT introduced in late 2019 and no better than the RX 580 which was similarly priced and introduced in mid 2017. So if you think about AMD's budget GPUs in terms of their generational improvements and performance per dollar, AMD has provided zero improvement in performance in the budget segment since 2017. To get a visual on the classic card this new GPU represents, comparing the GPU scores in TimeSpy and you can see that it is close to the RX 590, an overclocked RX 580, an RX 5500 XT, and Nvidia's GTX 1650 Super. And while that looks great on the surface, and in this market you could argue that, hey, I'll take a GTX 1650 Super for $200, what that misses is that many of these cards' shortcomings and design limitations that include a 64-bit memory bus, the Times 4 PCIe bus, a requirement for PCIe 4.0 supported on the motherboard and a CPU to get the best performance from this card, only two display outputs, and no hardware encoding. The limitations of this hardware design can lead to stutters and dips in performance that is not an enjoyable gaming experience. To give you an example, we can look at a couple of charts of gaming performance from hardware and box. You see the 1% lows are among the lowest when put on a system with PCIe 3.0 and the performance can be as low as a GTX 1050 Ti. Kit Guru also demonstrates the low 1% lows being among the lowest game after game. They also have a good summary comparing PCIe 3.0 performance being lower than PCIe 4.0 performance by double digits. You see the performance vary wildly from being comparable to a GTX 1650 Super and then dropping as low as a GTX 1050 Ti. Check out both of those reviews for more details, I'll leave a link in the description. But that's not all. I have many people with whom I've recommended over the past 18 months to get a CPU with integrated graphics until the GPU mining becomes unprofitable and GPU prices come back to normal. AMD has the best integrated graphics in the market and they like to call it an APU. However, as capable as they can be, compared to discrete GPUs, they are limited. For a quick comparison, AMD APUs only score about 1200 to 1500 in TimeSpy. So upgrading to the RX 6500 XT would provide performance that is three to four times higher. The only problem is that every APU AMD has ever produced up to this point only supports PCIe 3.0. So if you have an APU from AMD to get the best performance from the 6500 XT and to avoid the stutters and the very low 1% lows, you would need to make sure your motherboard supports PCIe Gen 4 like a B550 motherboard and purchase another CPU like a Ryzen 5 3600 or Ryzen 5 5600X as those do support PCIe 4.0. If you don't have PCIe 4.0, then the performance will be severely hampered by this 6500 XT. I only recommend this card if your CPU and motherboard supports PCIe 4.0. Two questions that bother me that were not addressed in this release of the 6500 XT. Why did AMD release a product that offers no performance increase over the last two generations of its own GPUs? Fundamental in business, if the new product is not better than the last product, then why wouldn't you just continue making the last product? And if you do release the new product, why do you expect reviewers to not laugh at you? If the amazing RDNA 2 is no better than the last two generations, then why would AMD risk tainting the name of RDNA 2? Why would they just not revive and start selling the RX 580 and or the RX 5500 XT GPUs? Those dies are still being sold in their Radeon Pro lineup. And you can still find Nvidia's last gen cards for sale and they just re-released the 2060. So why wouldn't AMD just make the RX 580 and RX 5500 XT which offer the same performance on PCIe 4.0 and better performance on PCIe 3.0? My second lingering question that no one has addressed is, why is this GPU based on a 6 nanometer laptop GPU? 
why would AMD take a GPU designed and destined for laptops and make a desktop GPU out of it? Why would AMD take precious 6 nanometer wafers and not have those AMD GPUs sold to OEMs for laptops? AMD wants to make inroads into the laptop segment and we just saw at CES 2021, they made some bold statements, had a very competitive lineup, but you could not find many laptops with AMD GPUs over the past year. Did OEMs get tired waiting for GPU dies from AMD? Did they strike a better deal from Intel and their new GPUs? Did Nvidia offer a better deal? Did OEMs tell AMD, no thanks, we've already made a deal for other GPUs? And does AMD now have all these 6 nanometer wafers they ordered from TSMC and no OEM customers for them? And could converting laptop GPU dies to desktop GPU cards be the only way to get rid of the stock? Time will tell and we will see if more AMD GPUs and laptops are available this year versus what we saw last year. What could AMD have done to make this GPU launch go better? For me, they could have offered a version that does not require a 6-pin power connector. We know from the RX 6600 that RDNA 2 can be very efficient. And now, being based on a 6 nanometer process and designed for laptops, this GPU could be the most efficient desktop GPU in the world, period. Why would they not offer a version that runs on PCI power alone? With only two display outputs, they could also have made a half-height GPU that would have been the new GPU king for all efficient small form factor and media center type builds. I know I would love a replacement for my half-height RX 560 card, and this GPU would be more than twice that performance. Currently, if you want the most powerful and smallest GPU that does not require a power connector, then you have to find a GTX 1650. When that card launched in April of 2019, Tech reviewers also denounced that card since the RX 570 provided better performance and was cheaper. However, it did have a few versions that were half-height cards and that did not require a power connector. It was small and efficient and is still the world's most powerful GPU that does not require a power connector. If AMD had launched such a version of the 6500 XT, then there would have been a segment of the community that would have praised AMD for at least providing a GPU for the segment for the first time since 2019. But they didn't. I think that was a real miss. That could have given it a purpose in life, and that would have made a lot of sense for a very specific segment. As it is now, without having answers to my two lingering questions, it just doesn't make very much sense. For now, all we can do is wait, and we can look forward to having GPU prices getting better later this year. If you like this type of analysis and insight, like, share, and subscribe for more. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.